Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford here with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I got something different for you today. I don't have a drone, uh, but we do look at a lot of uh, tech items on this channel and uh, bringing you today the Hovsko Porto Max electric scooter. Why would a drone channel be looking at electric scooter, you ask? There's some good reasons for it, and uh, I'll show you here. Let's get this guy out of the box like I always do. I like to show uh, everything as I see it and as I do it. Uh, so let's pull it out of the box. I don't know how much assembly is going to be required on this uh, scooter, uh, but we'll get it out and we'll find out together. I'll go over all the features and all of the specifications of this product uh, here in just a few minutes. But uh, let's quit messing around. Uh, let's get this scooter out of the box. Okay, let's open this guy up and uh, see what we can see. They use they use plenty of glue on this uh, on this box. I can tell you, which is probably a good thing. You wouldn't want it coming open in transit. Okay, we've got a retail box inside, so uh, let me get that out of there. So okay, here's uh, the retail box, and it, it gives you all the specifications on the side there, and gives you a look at the uh, at the scooter itself. Uh, so I'm noticing some differences on the side of the box here what it says for specifications. Uh, but uh, it is saying that it has app uh, connectivity, so we'll look into that Bluetooth uh, connection with an app, so we'll check that out. Uh, but this is saying a 350 watt motor on the box. Uh, on the website it says a 500 watt motor. Uh, and then it's uh, talking about a range of 35 miles. That's the same as what it says on the website as well. 12 inch tire size, which is a good thing. You can look at these tires and those, those are uh, air filled tires, uh, pneumatic tires, which is a good thing. The box is saying max speed of 15 miles an hour. On the website it says 19 miles an hour, so we'll be able to check that out. 15 degree grade rating, in other words, it'll climb up a 15 degree uh, grade. IPX5 water rating, now that doesn't mean you could submerge this thing, but if you go through a puddle or something, you're not going to hurt it. Then it's also mentioning on there that you've got dual disc brakes. Oh, I see a QR code there for the app, so we'll definitely check that out right on the uh, side of the box. Uh, but the other things, uh, max uh, load, it's saying 220 pounds on the box, the, uh, uh, which, which should be right up there for me. And then, uh, but uh, on the website it says 260 pounds. It says the net weight of this thing is about just a little over 43 pounds, so that's not bad. Uh, the, and, and with regard to the motor, it says 350 watts, 500 peak, 350 sustained, so that makes sense. It's got a lithium ion battery, uh, 36 volts, 374.4 watt hours, charging time of about six hours. Uh, so, okay, let's, uh, let's quit messing around. Uh, well, I'll show you the other side of the box here, too. So here's the back side of the box. Uh, Electric scooter, Porto Max, that's what we got. It says hub mounted 450 watt. Well, is it 350, 450, or 500? Not sure, but uh, it says 500 max on the website. Uh, and uh, top speed of 15, it says 19 miles an hour on the website. Uh, 380 watt hour battery, 35 miles. Now, I doubt if you're going to get 35 miles in reality, but how far are you going to go on an electric scooter, right? I would say if you get 25 miles, that's going to be great. Uh, auto LED headlamp. It's got a utility uh, uh, ba uh, basket on the back, which is handy, and that's perfect for what I do with drones. Uh, and it's got three riding modes, uh, low, medium, and high. We talked about that. Uh, dual disc brakes, which is, I, that is awesome. You really want to be able to slow down. And, uh, and then with the pneumatic tires, it's talking about it gives you a better ride. It has uh, cruise control so you can set the speed. Okay, let's quit messing around. Let's get this guy out of the box. Okay, I'm gonna be in and out of the frame here as we uh, pull this guy out of the box, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see if they put as much glue on this part of the box as they did the other, and it appears to be the case. So I'm here to tell you there's no shortage of glue at the Hubscope factory. Uh, let's open this guy and pull it out. I'll kind of tip it over here, so hopefully you can get a look at it. Plenty of foam, etc. It's packed in there good. Right off the bat, we got an accessory box. We'll take a look at that in a minute. 
foam and more foam and even more foam. So this product weighs, and knocking the box over right into the camera, but it weighs 43 pounds, so it was easy enough for me to pull out of the box. Okay, it does come with instructions, and as I do this, the way the camera's set up here, my head's gonna get cut off a few times. Uh, but however, uh, nice set of instructions. Let's take a look at the accessory box. Uh, the thing that I would recommend that you have is a good uh, utility knife uh, when you're doing this. So you've got a bag with a uh, user manual and there's some other stuff in here. Let's see what we got. You've got some spare screws, which is handy. Uh, and then uh, a user manual, a do not return to the store, and uh, a support manual. So uh, uh, good, good to have that stuff. And then, of course, you got the, uh, the charge brick here. In my case, I've got a US plug, and of course that plugs, and, uh, and we'll show you where this plugs in to charge the battery. And you got a little tool kit. So I'm sure all of this is to assemble uh, the bike itself. You've got three uh, hex head, or as I call them, Allen wrenches. Uh, you've got some metric wrenches here, a 16, well two of them, a 16 and a 13. So you must need both of those at the same time, evidently. Okay, first things first, as you can see, this thing is covered with all kinds of foam and zip ties and everything. So I'm gonna get all that stuff off of there. Again, I recommend you have a utility knife with you. Of course, I'm not gonna make you sit through all that. We'll see you once I get all this stuff off of here. Okay, the first thing that it asks you to do is to use this Allen wrench to, uh, to tighten up this, uh, pre-tighten this uh, screw Allen screw that's in here. I'm just telling you, you're probably better off just grabbing the other end because this, uh, this thing does not fit in there very well. You're going to have a diff difficult time uh, getting this in there. Now, I even went out and got a ratchet, but as you can see, that's not going to fit in there. It's just a tight spot, so uh, no easy way there, but uh, I don't know. I tightened it as best I could maybe even too much uh, with my finger here. So you got that down in there and then you're gonna finish tightening it uh, with that Allen head uh, in a minute. But uh, so it's asking me to, uh, to lock this in place. So we'll see if we can do that. Uh, pull that up and yeah, that's locked firmly in place. So it asks you to stuff the wire down into the uh, tube here. So we'll do that. There we go, and there's the handlebars. And again, we'll adjust this uh, a little bit later. So then you've got, uh, you got six screws that go uh, in here to lock the handlebars in place. I won't make you sit through all that. Okay, so once you get the handlebars uh, screwed on, your next task is to line the handlebars up with the front wheel. So it's gonna take a little bit of trial and error. I know I moved it around a little bit there, just uh, uh, picking this up and down, so. I'm gonna see if I can tighten this down now. I think I have it straight. Okay, with just a little bit of trial and error, uh, I got, I believe the handlebars pretty straight and, uh, and I cinched this down. We'll give it another, uh, another turn here just for good measure. Yeah, it feels like it's in there good, so that shouldn't move around. Then you just, uh, with this handle here, the folding handle, you just lock that down and you got a little slider here to, uh, to unlock it, so. Looking at it, yeah, it looks pretty straight to me. Our next task is attaching the basket, and uh, there's uh, they've already pre-installed some screws uh, in the frame here. So I'll take those out, and I'll get this basket uh, installed on here. It's going to look about like, uh, like so. So uh, give me just a minute. I'll be right back, and uh, we'll have the basket on there. So they give you a warning right on the wheel, uh, check your tires. So they want you to check the air pressure. So of course I'll do that. In fact, let's look at the manual in here and let's see if we can see what that air pressure is supposed to be. So I was kind of surprised. They're saying the air pressure in these tires are 45 to 50 pounds. So if you've got a little tire inflator or you, if, if you don't have one, you ought to get one because they're handy. Uh, and uh, I'll get those aired up and uh, now we need to uh, get the battery charged before our first ride. So the battery port is right down here on the front of the battery and you've got a, uh, a barrel connector on the uh, charge brick here and you simply plug it in 
and then you've got your uh, uh, 120 volt cord plug it into the uh, uh, to the brick and into the wall and they say it takes up to six hours to fully charge it I'm sure it has a certain amount of charge on it already so it shouldn't take that long okay so I'm six foot tall and about 225 pounds and I fit on this thing uh, quite nicely so one of the things I want to point out is this is not a stand-up scooter. In other words, the handlebars are down uh, low enough here. I've cracked down so I'm staying in frame. The handlebars are down low enough, enough that you're not going to stand up on this thing and ride it. It's meant to be ridden with a seat. So I guess this is kind of a, a hybrid. It's not, ex you know, they call it a scooter and I guess it is. Uh, but it's kind of like an e-bike as well in that you do have a seat. Uh, and... Uh, one of the things that I think is handy about this is you've got those 12 inch tires. So some of the scooters, if you've ever rented one of the Lime scooters or one of those rental scooters, they got little bitty tires. They're not so stable. This has got a little bit bigger wheels on it and it's got pneumatic tires. So it's going to give you a little bit softer ride. The other thing is you have dual disc brakes. That is huge because you want to be able to stop, right? That's uh, as important as going. Uh, so I'm looking forward to trying that out. It's very simple. You got a throttle right here and there's a control panel. We'll look at that when we do our, uh, our first ride. Uh, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Comfortable. Now, build quality, it looks quite good. Uh, as I was putting it together, I paid a lot of attention to the welds, etc. Everything looks really good on there. Very nice welds, etc. There are a couple of little issues. Uh, so in installing the uh, the basket here, I was only to get able to get uh, uh, three of the four screws in the basket because the holes just don't line up. And the only way I'm going to be able to uh, resolve that is to drill out one of those mount holes, which I'll do at a later date. But in the meantime, the three screws are holding it uh, pretty good. Uh, the other thing I'm going to say about assembly, you've got to have a little bit of mechanical ability, I'm going to say, to put it all together. If you're not comfortable with that, I would take it to a bicycle shop or something like that to have it uh, put together and they can get everything adjusted for you uh, just how you want. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, this is a handy, for me, with drones, uh, I'm going to use this a lot of times. I just want to run down the street to the, to the park or something to fly a drone. Hey, I could put all my stuff in the basket back here and just head to the park. Uh, it's smaller and lighter than an e-bike, so that makes it handy. It's also something that I can uh, throw in the back of my uh, uh, Chevy Tahoe easy enough. It's about a little over 40 pounds, so I can pick it up uh, very easily. And it does fold down. Let's take a look at that. So when you're ready to fold it up for transport, you push up on this red tab and pull out. And the handlebars just kind of uh, drop down. There's really no, th there's nothing that locks them in place or anything like that. But it does drop them down. And, uh, and then you can pick the whole thing up and put it in your vehicle. That way you don't have to be as tall as it is when it's uh, fully extended. And uh, when you extend it, make sure that it is locked in place. So let me get this scooter charged up. And we'll take it out for its first ride. Uh, I'm going to tell you. I'm not sure I recommend assembling it in your living room like I did, although it can be done easy enough. There's nothing too terribly messy about it, but you're probably better off doing it out in your garage. Anyway, uh, let me get it all charged up and we'll take it out for a ride. Hey, okay, so I'm gonna take my first ride on the uh, Porto Max, the Huffsco Porto Max uh, scooter, sit down scooter, I should say. Uh, I've got it in medium power mode and I'm gonna ride over to uh, the schoolyard that's not far from my house. So when we get over there, I'll set up the tripod so we could get some uh, views of the, uh, of the scooter, me riding, actually riding the scooter around. Uh, but in the meantime, here's a, here's a first person view uh, and we'll just, uh, this is my first ride on it. So you guys are getting the, uh, the first view here. Yeah, not bad. And uh, I got the tires all aired up. Just went over the curb, didn't feel too bad. Uh, so yeah, not bad at all. Let's, uh, let's head over to the, uh, let's head over to the school. Adjust this camera just a little. And uh, yeah, we're in uh, medium mode here. I hit uh, 
full throttle and it's saying nine miles an hour on the, uh, let's see how fast, now, now it's up to 10. So I think it's supposed to go 12 miles an hour. There's 11. Uh, so yeah, it's getting there. Fast enough on a little scooter, I'll say. Uh, but yeah, pretty easy to operate. I mean, you know, like I said, this is my first, you guys are witnessing my first time on the scooter. And uh, let's see what we can get it up to here. 11 miles an hour. It says 12 miles an hour top speed in this, uh, in this mode. Let's see if we can get to that 12. Maybe. Now it seems to be right at 11. Now I will say this, uh, I'm a heavy guy. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm at probably pretty close to the max rating uh, for the scooter. I think max is uh, 250 or 240, something like that. And, uh, and I'm uh, 225. So uh, yeah, I'm definitely up there, but it feels good. So I just moved onto the sidewalk here and yeah, I mean, I'm feeling good. So, yeah, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I get into the uh, parking lot of the, of the schoolyard here, and the brakes are quite good. I just uh, am making it around the corner here. And uh, yeah, the, you know, had to hit the brakes there. Did quite, quite good. As you can say, see, it's kind of a blustery day here. So uh, not the best day uh, to, be, uh, to be doing this. I would have preferred a nice sunny day. But let's see, we got a truck coming through the parking lot here at high speed, so I'm gonna ease off. Yeah, it's just always amazing to me in a parking lot how fast people will, will drive. But anyway, okay, so now I'm in this parking lot, 14 miles an hour in medium mode. That's indicated. We got a stop sign here, so we'll stop at the stop sign. Man, the brakes are really powerful, so I'm, that's, uh, that's a good sign. So, you know, I just hit the gas full throttle. Acceleration, it's not gonna break you, it's not uh, neck breaking, that's for sure. So, uh, let me, I'm gonna stop right here and uh, throw it in high speed mode, and uh, we'll see how much of a difference that makes. So I just, uh, two pushes of the button on the control panel, we're in high speed mode. Let's try it again. I don't necessarily see a lot of difference in acceleration, but it definitely, yeah, I mean, it's picking up. There's 12, I think it says 15 miles an hour top speed, Am I, or 19 maybe it was. There's 15, and it seems to be stopping at 15 miles an hour. And you know what I realized is, uh, I was, I was going with the wind. We got a, it's a really windy day today. You can't hear it because I got the wind muff on this, uh, on, my, uh, on my microphone, but uh, it's a quite windy day. So let's, I'm gonna see if, what it'll do. I'm gonna get on a road here where I can go with the wind. And there, I get up to 17 miles an hour just then very briefly going the other direction. But this will be with the wind on this road. So let's see what it does. Full throttle, 16. Yeah, holding it 16 miles an hour. Okay, let's, uh, let's turn around here. And try it the other direction. 11, 12. Yeah, and I'm going against the wind here, and it's making a huge difference. So I'm going to try sideways to the wind. And by the way, it handles really good. I think these 12-inch wheels make a big difference. Okay, so there we're speeding up. 16 miles an hour. 16, let's turn around and go the other way and see. Very easy to easy to ride. Any, even if you've never ridden a scooter before, you're going to be fine on this thing. Okie dokie. Let's pull into the parking lot here and uh, let's set up the tripod, and I can show you a little uh, a little bit of video of me riding the scooter around in the parking lot. Hey, okay. So you saw me ride the uh, Hofsco Porto Max scooter. 
uh, from my home over here to the schoolyard. First person view on this camera on the handlebars, but what you haven't seen is me riding uh, the scooter in operation itself. So I got the kit, my other camera set up here. We're going to ride around the parking lot a little bit and at least give you an idea. Uh, I think ultimately in my next video, we'll put the Skydio 2 drone up in the air so it can track me and we'll get some, uh, some good video uh, of the scooter in action. So a couple of comments. Uh, this, I would almost call this a hybrid. I keep wanting to call it a bike. Well, it's not a bike, obviously. There's no pedals or anything. However, it does have a seat, right? And you can't, you couldn't stand up and ride it because these handlebars aren't high enough. I like this. Uh, it, it's perfect for, uh, for an older gentleman like myself. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, uh, we'll, we'll ride it around here and it's kind of show you in action. The other thing I want to point out is the basket in the back here. I carried all this camera gear, the tripod, everything. I carried all this stuff in the basket. That's going to be handy as heck. And I'm going to use this for a lot of drone shoots when I want to get way out on the green belt or something that's too far to put on the backpack and walk. I can get on this scooter and, and do that. I can load this in the back of my uh, Chevy Tahoe. And, uh, and you know go miles down the, down the trail uh, to get some good uh, drone video. Uh, but anyway, let me, uh, I've got it in medium power mode right now. So let's just ride around here a little bit and uh, show you the scooter in action. Do some figure eights and so forth. Just give you a look at it. I, we've got a pretty wide angle uh, lens on the Action 4 camera, so hopefully I can uh, get some video here. Just doing some, uh, do a couple figure eights here. And it's, as you can see, it's really easy to handle. I'm no uh, expert. Uh, and, and truthfully, other than riding one Lime scooter one other time, this is the first time I've ever ridden a scooter around. So uh, this is new to me. This is in medium speed and it's very easy to control. Uh, not having any problems at all. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's, the, that's the scooter itself. I'll do a much more extensive video uh, later on and show you. Well, like I said, I'll take, the, I'll take a drone with me. We'll put the drone up in the air, do some tracking, and, uh, and go on some adventures with this uh, uh, Hubsco uh, Portomax scooter. So uh, I'm going to try one other thing here. I want to put it in low speed mode. Oops, I turned on the headlight. That's one thing I didn't show you. See the headlight here? Uh, you can turn that on and off just one push of the button. Uh, and it, by the way, it, it's set to automatically come on when you turn it on, so you kind of have to physically turn it off. So uh, anyway, a couple pushes and I'm in low speed mode there. And, and you can't see it, but on the display here, it has a picture of somebody walking. So I think that means walking speed. So let's try it out here and see how that works. And it is quite slow. In fact, uh, I'm going to say it's actually harder to ride in the low speed mode than it is in medium because, uh, because it's so much slower. Yeah, I mean, it takes, you know, you really have to, have to, uh, you really have to work on your balance uh, in low speed mode. So I'm going to go back into medium. So we're in medium again. And uh, let's, uh, let's ride it around a little bit. Yeah, so medium is the ticket, because you can see I'm moving right along here. So I think you're probably, when you're riding this, uh, you're going to be either in medium or high most of the time. At least that's what, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I can tell you that much for sure. Hey, okay, so that's it for this first video uh, with the Hubsco Porto Max uh, scooter. Uh, we're, I'm going to use this thing a lot. I'm just telling you that. Uh, part two of the video, again, we'll get it out. I'll get a, a drone tracking me and we'll do a much more extensive ride with it. We'll ride it a lot further. Uh, you know, I'm thinking uh, maybe out at Kleiner Park or one of those places where there's a lot of trails or maybe even out on the Boise Green Belt. Uh, but in any case, uh, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, 
please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I so appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Bye now. The Hubsco Portomax scooter. Pretty cool.